What's up, everybody? How the heck are you? Who's ready for some GKR? A big day today. Four matches. That's right. Four. All happening. And we'll be here for it. Hello, everybody. How are you? They bring this music down just a smidge as we're moving into the actual show part of the show. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Kicking things off today. It's going to be TSA versus Shot Kalalas. And then, of course, we're going through everything. If you read the description or if you read the title of this stream, all four teams coming out today. And let's take a quick look at the current standings. Seam and Shot Kalalas both at 4 and 1. Shot Kalalas had to forfeit their last match as their players weren't available due to Dreamhack. But they will look to get back in the winner's column today against TSA Gaming. Victor Tomi Venpers in the first set against Lucas, Mo, and Vitor. Whoa. I did not know we were going to see that much Mo today. Look at that. A lot of Mohammed Light in the lineup today. That's pretty exciting. Tommy Venpers Victor against Mo Ruben Vitor in the second set. And if necessary, set number three. Keith versus Adriel. Should be a whole lot of fun. And we will be here for it. Shout out to everybody joining both on Twitch and on YouTube. I don't know about you guys, but I am ready. Oh, here we go. Bands are up. The unknown man on Twitch saying, hey, Rich, what's up? Good to see you. TSA with a whole lot of bands. Fishboy. Tornado. S I almost said structure. Uh, Mortar and the Evo Knight all out. Shot Kalalas only choosing to ban... The Goblin Giant. Maybe that's a statement? I don't know. I'm surprised they didn't go for a couple other bands here. Specifically, no Evo ban. So here we go. The 1v1, the BO3, 1v, or 3v3, BO1. Victor versus Lucas. Tommy versus Mo Light. And then, if necessary, Venpers versus Vitor will be fun. Smurf play. The only problem with having so many world class players on your roster. Yeah, a wealth of riches, if you will. Which is also what you call a group of people named Richard. A wealth. I just made that up right now. But I actually feel pretty good about it. I feel pretty I feel pretty proud of it overall. You know? I think it's I think that was pretty excellent. So let's go ahead and uh whoa. Are we almost there? Oh here we go. Game time! Let's do it. Smurf Blade. Ah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Evo Skellies for Lucas. Is he running something cycly, perhaps? As these two players just kind of hang out and look at each other. Ooh, maybe Royal Giant. Maybe Loon. We will see. I don't know if Loon runs Evo Skellies right now. The whole meta feels like it's in flux. Probably not RG now with the Bomb Tower. Someone put a bounty out, by the way. I don't know if it happened. Um, but someone did put a bounty out, I saw, that they'd pay somebody like 10 or 15 bucks. Bucks. Bunks. Bucks if they won a game with Loon GY. Smurf Blade pointed out Monk Loon runs Evo Skellies. Kaiser Soze in the Twitch chat. That's a nice, that's a nice Monk ability. Didn't quite get the Evo Skellies off, but they won't be a problem going the opposite direction. And Loon for Loon here. Victor going all in on that left-hand lane. Phoenix trying to stop the Loon from connecting. Not going to make it happen. That's a good minor tankage. But it will be Lucas who comes out on top with the tower down as 
Victor not quite able to do enough. And Smurf Blade pointed out Balance Changes have not gone live yet. Surprised no one's using Evo Archers. That's it. That is interesting. We'll talk about those balance changes today. Evo Archers getting a little bit of a nerf. But I don't think it's one that's going to drop them out of the top three in Evos. Goblin Giant getting a nerf, which I believe the nerf is essentially just reverting one of its pre previous balances, one of its previous buffs. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna confirm that that's really what it is, but I think they kind of just reverted the spear goblin attack speed buff. Loon to the right hand lane. Bomb tower will easily shut it down, and no challenge here. No challenge here for Lucas. Easy does it. There we go. Oh, let me get the music back on here. Well, nice nice round one win for Lucas. Let's see. Tumas, Tumas saying, Rich, why is the little prince claiming to be king, the next king? The future king isn't the uh, epic prince nest in succession. Oh, here we go. Whoa, let's jump into gameplay here. And Mohammed Light opening up with the Evo recruits, who some say could still use a nerf. You know, I don't know if the Epic Prince is next in line for succession. That's a good question. Maybe the little prince thinks he's going to somehow leapfrog the succession. That would be in line with his personality. Wouldn't you expect the little prince to do something to steal the crown from the epic prince? And with a fairly quick cycle plus little prince, expect to see a lot of recruits on the board in this game. Wall breakers will get through. One connects, not two. Easy call there for Muhammad Light to log that one back. So looking at the balance history, one of the, the there were there were multiple balance changes or buffs for the Goblin Giant this year. One of them was when they reduced the attack time interval of the Spear Goblins back in July. Oh no, back in February from 1.7 to 1.5 seconds. So that's a, they're reverting that previous buff, as I surmised. Little misplay there from Mohammed. Smurf Blade saying, I wouldn't know the lore behind the Little Prince, behind the Clash Universe, but I think the Little Prince doesn't actually mean royalty or being descended from the Blue Red King. Yes, but he does say future king over here. Oh, you're talking about the, 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 the Prince and the Dark Prince. It'd be a weird thing to use that terminology, though, and not imply that they are somehow at least in the line of succession. So here we go, Sudden Death Overtime, 14-12, and the, the dual lane pressure now of the recruits starting to create some problems. Tomy continuing to focus on the one lane, he really can only focus on that lane. And a nice full catch there from Mo. Bomb Tower will take care of the wall breakers, and the connection on the right hand side gives Mohammed Light the lead 885 to 11. 
10, 10 51. But, man, the Evo Archers. Still a danger. And Bomb Tower doing an okay job here. This recruit on the left has to get picked up, and this is a now a potential problem for Tomy here. Well, well constructed, and Molite takes a fairly significant lead as we go into triple. And the wall breaker block here, very nice. 223 to 435. Poison now down for Mohammed Light. Log, and he should be in good shape, and he is. GG, well played. 2 0. Shot Kalalas opens up on fire as you expect. Keenan on Twitch saying, Hello, Rick, watching you. First of all, it's Rich. Watching you from geometry class. Watching me while you're in school? I mean, I appreciate the support, and yet, here's what I'll say about school, right? Because school isn't everything. Um, there's also other important things in life. But doing well in school opens up opportunities for you, right? So, like, I appreciate you watching me in geometry. But if you do, like, a little bit better in geometry, right? If you're getting an A, then, you know what, do you and ignore me. But if you're not getting an A in geometry, just do your geometry because then you have more options to do. That's the biggest thing about, the biggest thing I learned about school isn't that school itself is important. It's a success and school opens up options for you later to do what you really want. So, uh, if you're going to watch somebody in class, I guess watch me, but maybe do your geometry. That's the best I can say. Um, let's see, to the chat here. Uh... The Little Prince is an imposter on wanted posters all, all over the realm. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, lineup got changed. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. I guess they changed the lineup here for the King of the Hill set. They do have the ability to do um, to do trades. Let me go ahead and bring up the lineup here. I'm gonna turn this music way down. They do have the ability not to do trades, but to do substitutions. So lineup change here. Adriel, Adriel. We asked him at we asked him at World Finals, and he said Adriel, which was really interesting because I didn't even think that sound was like the kind of I didn't think he would pronounce that that way in Spanish. But Adriel, Ruben, and Vitor against Tommy Venpers and Keith and King of the Hill. Um, Rowflow X saying Rich Mo just lost in GKR to Sandbox the other day. Is he still the goat? That's two devastating losses this year alone with the worlds lost. It's a game where if you win, if you lose thirty percent of the time, you're S tier. Like, I don't know, I don't know how else to put it that way. Um, it's a game where you, if you lose, that someone who loses thirty percent, three out of ten games, is an S tier player. And Mo was at S plus plus, winning like 90 percent for so long. Um, I don't think you can make the argument that Mo is like out of his prime necessarily. I think that. Uh, I've said this a lot on stream already, but I think that the addition of Evos in particular, um, yeah, in DreamHack, Mo made it to the end, uh, made a full lower bracket run all the way to the grand final. Um, so, yeah, I think that um, Evos very clearly have um, lowered the skill gap between players, in my opinion, um, because of their volatility. You've seen most of the top players went down in win rate. Most of the mid, the like, the S tier and top A tier players went down in win rate, and the B and lower A tier players all went up in win rate pretty much. So I don't know. The unknown man saying just finished studying for history and social studies. Good on you. Is this giant graveyard or is this giant double prince? Di giant triple prince, maybe. If Moe's running giant triple prince, I'll really laugh. This should, th that would be crazy. And this is also kind of a, this is a, what a nutty push. What a nutty push. Um, first time chatter on Twitch. Kita, K, Kitao? Kitai, oh, I, I don't even know how, Kitao, I don't know how to pronounce that at all, sorry. Um, surely people were saying the same thing about Moogie before he won his world, this world's forms, form ebbs and flows, yeah. 
It does. It ebbs and flows, and uh, metas shift, gameplay styles shift. I think that the Goblin Giant Rage meta basically... Here's the thing, right? I think the Goblin Giant Rage meta in particular gave so many people free wins because on balance, if you had Goblin Giant Rage and they didn't have a direct snipe to it or a mirror match, you got a free win. And so having to win one game against Mo rather than having to win two games against Mo is um, much easier. And I think that I think that it's very likely that if Goblin Giant Rage isn't a thing, that World Finals looks different, far different. How different? I don't know. Like who specifically wins what? I don't know. But I think that World Finals looks a lot different if we don't have Goblin Giant Rage being this weird thing that turns World Finals into a series in many ways of BO1s rather than BO3s. I'm very glad that Goblin Giant got a bit of a nerf. Maybe it needs more, we don't know yet. And this is just devastating for Tomy. And that's tower down. GG, well played. True skill is determine how you adapt, whether you're smart enough to do what actually works, my honest opinion. Yeah, sure. I mean, yes. Yes and, right? There hasn't been a meta in the past since Evos showed up. Since the Evo Goblin Giant Rage meta, there has not been a meta that... Oh, and I guess that was Mo. What the heck? I guess maybe the graphics were wrong. So it was Mo in King of the Hill. Very strange. Um, if Evos weren't a thing, do you think Mo would have won Worlds? Um, honestly, I think that it's less... I, like I just said, I think it's less Evos and more um, Goblin Giant Rage. Um, Air Surfer still got fourth even though he's in Goblin Giant Rage. Go Air Surfer, I mean Goblin Giant. Air Surfer used Goblin Giant in the first game of Worlds against Mo. What are you talking about? Um, Air Surfer definitely used Goblin Giant. And, I mean, so Goblin Giant, Goblin Giant Rage, whatever you want to call it. Um, in general, Goblin Giant was so nasty at Worlds and was essentially a turned Worlds into a series of BO1s. Um, and I think that created, again, I, I it will be interesting to see what Evos are like without this Goblin Giant problem. Um, but in general, I think that Evos, Evos made the game more volatile and less predictable and has really, I think, again, closed the skill gap. And um, Goblin Giant in particular also did that. Do I think that over a long enough curve, the top players still are the top players? Yes. Um, but the uh, but in a double elimination tournament, it's kind of a small sample size, realistically. So I think that if you did like a hundred, if you did like a hundred game tournament or hundred game tournament, yeah, something like that, you're still going to see the top players come out on top um, over that long enough curve. But it's kind of a small. It's kind of a small uh, sample size, realistically. Um, let's see. Smurf Blade saying, I'm not... Uh, I know that there's not enough info yet, but I'm interested to see how tower troops interact with the dual rules. F from what I understand so far, they're not going to be part of it yet. Because um, they're not even in duels in-game, initially. So we'll see how that actually takes place. Um, here we go. But yeah, back to this Back to this opinion. True skill is determined by how you adapt and whether you're smart enough to do what honestly works. What actually works. Well, I mean, it's not like Mo didn't do what actually works. A few things happened. And one of them is, again, the BO1 syndrome of Goblin Giant. Um, the Evos, obviously. And then, of course, what happened to him in the Adriel match with the having the wrong deck picks on... Um, having the wrong deck picks on, on the stage of them. Being given the wrong paper. Is Mo good now? Is the fun... It's just hilarious. People are so funny. Interesting deck here from Vempers. I guess he's gonna be running Mega Knight here. Very wise, very wise wisdom. The wisest of wisdoms. Um, I'm gonna try to commentate to you next next to you one day. Well, become a pro player. That's the most likely way is to become a top tier pro and then decide to commentate on the side or retire. I'm just glad we got a different worlds than last year, refreshing and exciting. 
Hmm, interesting. Hoggin will get two. No, just gets one. I mean, I'm a Mo fan. I'm going to see him fall like that. Yeah. I just think, like, one of the interesting things when you look at um, World Finals, uh, I don't know if that person has updated. Um, like I've said before, whoever's doing Wikipedia, whoever does, does the um, wiki, the Liquipedia, has been a little, has not been super on it about updating this year. But of course, thank you for doing it in the first place. But if you look at Moe's losses, his loss to Air Surfer, the first game was Goblin Giant Bowler Rage. So whoever said that Air Surfer won without doing it is hilarious. Um, and then, um, oh, when Mo beat Faust, Faust didn't didn't play any Goblin Giant Rage. Played no Goblin Giant in that game. That's interesting. Um, where are the rest? In? Maybe I just need to do that. I have some time off coming up. Maybe I'll just do it myself. Um, but I'm fairly certain. Let me go to the Adriel match. I'm fairly certain in both of the matches that um, Mo lost. It was Goblin Giant Rage. Was one of the was one of the two games he lost. Fairly certain about that. Which again, when the when the game reverts to when there's a rock paper scissors element, right? When you have a deck like that that you like have to be prepared to that you're you know that you have to guess when you're going to try to snipe it. That's that to that level. Great, and here we go. Boom, boom. Mo so far, 3-0 on the day. Um, let's see. Okay, so game one against Adriel was RG Rage. Um, and then what was game two? Game two, Adriel played Goblin Giant Sparky Pump. So, yeah. So, yeah, I also think, Ra I also think that Rage, um, Rage might need a nerf too. Because the the adding damage to rage is kind of crazy. I guess it makes it useful, but man, it's just a, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, but yeah. So of the four games that Mo lost, two of them were to Goblin Giant. One of them was to Goblin Giant Rage. The other one was to Goblin Giant Sparky Pump, and that was that was also the one where Mo looked at opened up his paper and was like, "Uh oh, I have the wrong deck progression list," and made a random deck like last second that he wasn't prepared to make and. Almost, still almost won it. He was he was ahead. Like he had the he had that the left hand tower of Adriel down to like 500 HP, and his right hand tower his towers were fully healthy. And Goblin Giant Sparky still is ridiculous with the pump because he couldn't effectively punish the pump. So once the pump started going, um, we all thought the Monk Phoenix meta was the worst meta, but this meta is the worst. Yeah, though this is this is the. I'm glad that there's going to be a Goblin Giant nerf. I hope that it's impactful. Um, I don't know if it'll be fully impactful. A lot of people are saying that it really is the HP. Um, again, the buffs that happened for Goblin Giant this year included a 6% HP buff. I would have I would have reduced... I would have done the, the Spear Goblin. Here's the problem, right? Is Supercell can't just go and kill the card all the way right now. Because um, then you really screw over the players who have invested time and money into their Goblin Giants. Um, so I think that doing the, um, that this reversion is good. I would have liked to see them reduce the HP, like, because they increased it by 6%. Reduce it back by 3%, right? Take it back a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Excited of the new tower stuff or not? Nah? I don't know yet. Too early to see, but it's, I, I like that they're... Look, here, here's the thing. People complain about the deck, the game being stale and not having new things, and then new things come and they complain about those. So I'm excited there are new things happening, and that is interesting. And Mo back to this giant GY again. It's not doing its thing. Smurf Blades, and I still think that Monk Phoenix was the most boring meta of all times. I think that... Oh, well, that's not on that's not on my end, folks. Um, that is from the production. Um, Monk Phoenix is the second most boring meta of all time. The Barb Hut meta. The most boring meta of all time. 
Bar Putt was one that I'm very happy they nerfed into the ground. Bar Putt was terrible. Do you think coaches not being able to play, talk to players would have changed the outcome to some matches in Worlds and have players never been able to talk to their coaches in any previous Worlds? Yeah, um, players haven't been able to talk to coaches during gameplay, right? They can, they've been able to talk before and after, but not like during a match, not during a BO3. That's never been a thing. Um, but in this case, now that we're not in the Teams format, since solo format, coaches have not been allowed backstage um, to confer, to like be prepping with their players like that. Um, and there are some just logistical reasons why not. Um, but that fireball is on that fireball. I understand why. It's a little fishy, though. A little fishy of a fireball there, Victor. This giant in deep. This graveyard all over it. And is Mo going to go 1, 2, 3 here? Dark Prince gets some splash. No, he's not going to be able to get it back. I don't think he gets it back. I think this is going to be Victor for the win. I don't think Mo has enough time to do anything here. Arrows high. He has to get back to a graveyard and get enough graveyard damage. He's gonna play, he's gonna get graveyard down. He's gonna have to arrows or snowball, snowball, but it won't be enough. GG well played. Victor holds on. Nicely done. Um, let's see. All my games are against Goblin Giant. Yeah, it's super annoying. It actually like so the the double Evo tournament I thought was fun, but it was hard to evaluate. It, like once you got past five or seven wins, it was all Goblin Giant, and it's like okay, well that's not fun anymore. Um, I uh, well so Mo technically repeated decks in different matches. Um, what are you talking about? Hey Rich, how are you? I'm well. Thanks for asking. Remember the bar putt meta? Yeah, you're right. It's it was boring. Um, yeah, no, the bar putt meta was the worst. It was it, that was the most boring meta, and as a caster. It was torturous. At least Goblin Giant is offensive and creates big moments and comebacks, which is fun as a caster. Bar Putt just slowed the game down to a snail's pace and made it almost uncastable. Um, let's see. I mean, they overbuffed it for no reason and screwed over everyone who didn't want to play it. So, I mean, but you can say that about any card getting buffed. I, I don't. I don't think screwed over is a um, is a is fair at all in that context. They were trying. They. I do think they overbuffed it. Um, and they, and one of the buffs was inadvertent because they were buffing normal spear goblins and that became a goblin giant buff. Um, but I don't like anytime a card gets buffed, they just wanted it to be viable and they made it, they overdid it. And I think that the problem was they buffed it and then people didn't respond to the buff. So they're like, oh, that must not have been enough. And they buffed it again. Um, cause they buffed it in February and then the inadvertent secondary buff in April, and then they uh, gave it another real buff in August. And I think that real buff in August, the 6% buff in August on health, was the was the one that really kicked it over the edge. <laughs> Olmo wouldn't be caught dead losing to Victor. That's I I can't even I can't even give a, re a response to that because you're going to lose. You're going to lose some games. It's just going to happen, folks. They knew what they were doing. I refuse to believe the team is an inept as they make themselves seem. Um, what do you mean they knew what they were doing? Anyone? First of all, I know the balance team. They're great. They're really cool people. They are not out to get you. They are not bad guys. In fact. The, the guy who's, like, led the balance team for a long time is one of my favorite people at Supercell. There's no, like, conspiracy to make the game bad or to, like, they just, yeah. <laughs> Sparky with Snowball is interesting, says Smurfblade. Yeah, that is interesting. Oh, do I still have the music on? That's why that sound is so, so over the top. Um, Phoenix Mirror Monk was born. I mean, the the level six, the the double mirror, like the double level mirror, was a bad meta too. Right, cannon, um, cannon, e giant, e giant, um, e giant champion, e giant was terrible.
Oh, that... I thought for a second that that might burn off before it actually goes through. Super Mouse format. I'll show you, I'll show you more of the format after this game is over. But we are in second set, which is King of the Hill. Little Prince trying to do his thing. Imagine if they never vaulted the heel spell. They didn't. They reworked it into the hill spirit. This is a lot here. Victor does have a nice bomb tower to pull back, but he is very, very low on Elixir. Behind by so much, and Ruben can really just play this slow. You know what, I'll, I'll address this question. I'll address this and Kaiser Soze's comment during the break, because I do have thoughts on that. Victor doing his best to stay alive here. But he's not, I don't think he's gonna, he's gonna be long for this world. With Snowball, Evo Archers, and Little Prince, it's so hard for him to try to get the balloon through here. I think Snowball's there, oh boy. Snowball, Evo Archers are a little bit too close. They will prevent the shot though. 20 seconds left, Mini Pekka goes on the right hand side. And Victor is giving himself the best opportunity to try to get it back in this one. Little Prince stays alive, and that's a huge problem for Victor, though. Archer's high, and I like the high Archer's play. Very nice high Archer's play from Ruben. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, that, was, that high Archer's play is super clutch. And I'm going to go ahead and replay that high Archer's because of... Uh, it's actually going to relate to something we talked about at Worlds during Air Surfer's last game. And Mo Light getting the MVP here after his really excellent performance. Is the music going to play? What's going on with the music? Hey, music. Hey, music. Oh, there it is. It was just very quiet. Um, I'm going to go show you guys something here in this replay. As we, we kind of talked about this during during Worlds, Air Surfer's final game, you saw Mohammed you saw him make a mistake where when a loon, a minor loon came in, he played the archers low, which A gave them, of course, put them into arrows range, but B meant the archers didn't get to focus on the balloon because they focused on the minor. But look at this, the high archers play here. So as that minor goes low, the arrows totally miss the archers, able to stop that balloon from sneaking through and stealing that game. So very, very nicely done in that one and now we're gonna go ahead and update this to 02 game number one win here match one win here from shot kalalas okay let me go ahead and answer some of these questions here um lava god saying but don't you think the balance change team is forced by higher position guys to make some cards broken or bad in order to monetize them? no i don't um the when you introduce a new card or a new thing right like let's take a look at what we just saw with the evo ice spirit which is like the most unexciting introduction, right? Nobody's playing it, no one's interested in it. It's just kind of like blah, right? So while the effect of having a card be a little bit too strong might be that people spend more money on it, which is obviously something that Supercell would like because they need to be able to make money to sustain the game. Um, but also if it's, also people are excited and they want to play it, it gets in the mix. When a new thing is released and no one engages with it, it's just, it's not good for anybody. Um, I would rather have them release something new and have it be too strong than have it be too weak. Now, that includes responding to it being too strong, which we saw happen with something like the Little Prince before World Finals, right? So I would, but I would rather have something new come out and be too strong so it's exciting people engage with it. 
the only the, the challenge there is just making sure that they respond and adjust that appropriately once it becomes clear that it needs to happen. Uh, but I don't again, it's not like um, not like uh, malicious, so to speak. Um, so and so Kaiser Soze is saying some of the bounces are so bad they clearly overbuff and introduce things in an obviously broken state on purpose to mix up the meta and make money. Well, mix up the meta, yes, and I actually believe that balance changes should not be focused on balance specifically. Here we go, Olympo Squad, Tropical Gaming, Saudi Surgical Goblin, Capgun, Tourist Jonah Titan in the first set, Ali Framcedo Surge, Titan Coco in Thrill in the second set, and if we get there, Ali versus in Thrill. So again, there's different philosophies on balance. Some philosophy is balance should make everything as even as possible. Other philosophy, the one that I subscribe to, is that balance should disrupt the meta in order to make the game not be stale. In fact, in, I want to say it was the um, February-March meta of either 2019 or 2020. can't remember which one it was. might have been 2020. We had the most balanced meta for about two or three months we'd ever had. And it was the most boring and also very difficult from an um, esports side meta, really, because it was like it was too balanced. There was nothing exciting. Um... I think that maybe a, a more balanced meta can be more functional in the dual mode universe, but yeah, it was it was actually not well received after everyone after a couple months was like, man, this is really boring and like unpredictable and weird. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I think that that balances should continue to like if we got the game to be perfectly balanced, I wouldn't be like, hey, stop balancing. I would say, hey, let's we're gonna introduce something new and that's d disrupted at some point. It'll get crazy. Um, Let's see. Uh, it's too strong. It becomes many people know how to defend better. I don't know about the Ice Spirit. Yeah, I don't know anything about the Ice Spirit. Um, Kaiser Soze. Yes, a bit too strong, but like AQ and Phoenix got five nerfs, but they were close to balance. Yeah, because they also don't want to just like dive bomb something with the balances, right? You want to try to incrementally balance and see if that can solve the problem rather than kill it. Because then also if you kill the card, you don't get any more data because people will stop playing it. And in particular, Clash Royale players are really responsive to nerfs. When cards get nerfed, their use rate, especially amongst top players, often goes through the floor. Um, uh, so you, when you when, when you do a nerf, you don't want to just like smash it. You want to nerf it a little bit and see if that's the adjustment. Which is why the nerf here on Goblin Giant is reverting the attack speed for the Spear Goblins rather than killing the um, the tankiness. Which again, I think they could have brought the tankiness down by two or three percent, but. Again, they want to give it a chance for people to respond to it. Let's take a look at the bans for this matchup. Fishboy, Pump, and Evo Recruits for Olympo Squad. Goblin Giant for Tropical Gaming. So, hey, I'm happy to see a no Goblin Giant. No Fisherman's interesting, too. Um, and likely no Recruits. We might, we might see a more... We might be seeing a little bit more of a cycle meta in this matchup. Very interesting. Um, let's continue looking at chat. Uh... Let's see. There is has to be different teams, such as the business aspect, the financial aspect, that gives considerations. I mean, sure, I'm sure that's part of it. It's a business. But it's not like the, the business is create things to get people to engage with the game and then thereby spend money. It's not make something super insane so that they spend a bunch of money and then pull the rug out. It's not like, it's not, again, it's not malicious. It's a phone game. Um, let's see. Like, we both saw how often they do off offers out of nowhere with current booking cards. By example, when the goblins there, where you have Goblin Giant too. Yeah. So. Um, Smurflade, I made a full list of changes that would make cur to current EVOs that would make them as powerful as the Ice Spirit EVO. Um, yeah, but the Ice Spirit EVO is not strong enough. I think that uh, they, it needs to be a little bit stronger. It's boring. It's, un it's not even... I mean, unless, unless every other EVO is as weak... Then kind of what's the point? Whoa, we are jumping right into gameplay here. They they quickly jumped in. All right, here we go. Tourist and Saudi to open the up. Um, Uivu saying, I hope you commentate 2024 CRL Finals. You're awesome this year. Thank you very much. I've done every World Finals for CRL since its inception, and I plan to do it as long as it exists, as long as they'll happen. Uh, I think I know what you mean, says Smurfblade, referring to me talking about the super balanced meta. Uh, when Mini Pick and Magic Archer were popular, yeah, it was like insanely. I think it's I think it's like early 2020. Um, the balance should be focused on the cards that make no appearance in these pro tournaments. 
I don't know. I'm also a believer that it's fine for some cards to be noob cards. Right? It's I think it's fine for Wizard to be a card that is for newer players and that kind of tapers off as you get deeper into the game. But that's just me. No way. This dude actually came back. Bro, that's the funniest thing I've... I can't even believe you're showing your face here. I can't even believe... I saw how you got bodied and then blamed it on hacks. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, what is the grand prize for the last team standing at the end of the year? I forget. The full prize pool for the year is 46000 Another way to mix things up would be to add new content and not just overbuff things. Well, they did mix things up. They added it. They did mix things up, Kaiser Soze. They've and the, and, and we've they added champions. Then they added evolutions. Now they're adding tower troops. This is mixing things up. That is mixing things up. But then you add that like I don't know, man. There's, like, there's literally no way to make this community happy. It's physically impossible. It's, okay, let's put it. It's impossible to make this community happy and have a sustainable game. That's actually what I will say. Because the only thing to make this, this, team, this community happy is if you just gave everything for free and then, like, let the game, I don't even know. Because then you let the game get stale. Ult this Smurf play with the best way to say it. Ultimately, people want change, but only the way they want it. Yeah. And they don't even know what, people don't know what they want. Because you ask people what they want for change, and what they only want is QO, is quality of life improvements. But they don't want anything that is essentially actually new content. Because new content means, unless that new content is free. But you can't have free new content because then you can't even maintain the servers for the game. I'll be the first one to say that some of these things this year have been over-monetized. Max even agreed with some of that sentiment the other day on Twitter. But also I think people have unreal ex unrealistic expectations of how a business would run as well. Super Mouse, this is my first time watching GKR because I'm going to spend the format. Yes, yeah, sorry. This is a team event. The first set is 3v3 BO1s, where player, right now it's Tourist versus Saudi. The next game will be two other players from the two teams, and then if the games are split, it's like a best of three between the two teams. If the games are split, the third pair of players comes out, and if the one team wins the first two games, that's set over. Set number two is King of the Hill, like it's been in competitive gameplay for a long time. Each team puts out three players. If you win, you eliminate the other team's player and you stay on. If you lose, then you go down. And then if the first two sets are split, they go to a third set, which is a dual mode BO3. They should have added a separate currency for the tower troops or, they may, or make wild cards able to maintain. Yeah, I think I do think wild cards are too, are too unobtainable right now. I do agree that I think that both level 15 and EVOs are overly aggressively paywalled. And I hope that with the addition of more content and more different ways in which you can engage. Let's go ahead and watch the game here. See if uh, Saudi can come back here or not. And then we'll talk about this more. Oh, he can't. There's no way. Good pressure. Good pressure. You give him no chance to get on offense. GG, well played. GG, well played. Um, next up will be Surgical Goblin versus Jonah here in the 3v3 BO1. Um, what device do I play on? I play on both an iPhone and an iPad. Um, why doesn't Ian qualify for CRL? Maybe he will at some point. He got, he got decently close this year. Um, in what team is Muhammad Light? Check my description. That's where all the information there is. Um, let's see. Rich, good day to you. What deck are you currently running on your account? Uh, I'm currently running Splash Yard with Little Prince on my account. Um, we'll see if I stick with that. Last year I started running it because I was facing so much hog in, like, um, in Path of Legends, like, Arena's 7, 8, 9. 
then I just needed something that was going to allow me to not to deal with Hog. Uh, weirdly, says Smurfblade, I'd appreciate if Prevent Religions were more monetized than they currently are. It's not like you can freely unlock whatever Evo you want at any time. What up, future king over here? I mean, as long as you're keeping up with the um, Pass Royale, you can unlock the new Evo every month. Piggies from Surgical. Interesting. I'm trying to think of how often I've seen Surgical Goblin run Royal Hawks. Um, excuse me. Don't you know who I am? I would love a Wizard meta in Clash Royale. It would be something new. I do think that um, if there is a buff to Wizard, it's make it consistent with the Electro Wizard and Ice Wizard and give it a drop. Like, you know, if the wizard dropped and did a fireball when it dropped, making it more valuable defensively, and making you m play more risky with it defensively, that would be interesting. Yeah, that's the thing I don't like. Oh, you don't like that thing. Um, you don't like that particular mechanic. Phone game or not, as you say, it is a business making new things strong to incentive people to buy them is okay, making them uber OP so you have no choice but to buy them or lose is BS. Well, again, I think that the game's a little over monetized. I think the monetization stream is aggressive right now. Um, little prints they give everyone for free. Of course, having to rank it up. But. I don't know, I was able to rank up Little Prince immediately because I'd saved all of my... I, like, saved everything I could to prepare for when the next champion would come out. So I had my book of books, I had all my champion wild cards. I was able to get Little Prince to level 15, or to level 14 immediately. And then the first thing I did when I got enough EWCs was level up Little Prince. So I, I, I just planned ahead for that. Evos are there, again, Evo, I'll agree, Evos are over monetized. If you want someone who's going to join your I'm Angry at Supercell party, I recommend B Rad as a content creator. No one is more willing and excited to join the. <laughs> the Anger Parade. But. I am not as bothered by it. Or not as angry by it. Better way to put it. Like the goblin giant thing annoys me more than any of the monetization stuff. Like if you made me choose between Fixing the monetization problems and not having complete like cards like got like cards that tip the balance being completely broken, I would fix the broken problem. I'd fix balance before I'd fix monetization. This is a good push from Surge here. I like that little prince play. Good log. That's a sm that's a really nice NATO though out of Jonah to pull all that over and really shut that down. Really well-timed ability on the Little Prince. Pick to the right-hand side. Man, Jonah's cycle is so nice right now though, with Little Prince. So someone was asking, this is the exact deck that I'm running on in ranked right now, is this exact graveyard deck from Jonah. And Surge just cannot find a way. The only real way to find a way is if a, yeah, if an Evo Skelly had, had escaped, but Hard to do against this deck. GG well played. Jonah, two up, two down. Tropical Gaming. Getting it done. Nicely work. Nice work. Nice work indeed. All right. That's That should be set number one in the books. Here for... Uh, oh, no. That's...
that should be let me make sure I fix that for the right on which sides on which it's for there we go um let's see one second let me get that let's see you mean the pass royale that tripled in price yeah i do that's the pass royale that i mean the one that went from five dollars to uh eleven dollars twelve dollars what is it the the big one i don't know like i said i used to have to pay sixty dollars for a game without having even played it so i just like i have like i don't have a, i i don't have a ton of empathy when it comes to people who are annoyed about monetization i don't know it's my it's my least likable opinion in clash royale but it's a phone game you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they raise the price on water. Whenever I get into this, I'm going to be in the same spot. It went from 6 euros to 15 euros in Europe. Or maybe in all of Europe, or just where you are. Um, it should be quick. Hold on. Um, Sorry, just trying to handle something real quick. All right, here we go. Oh, next game. Titan and Ali, King of the Hill. Which deck, in your opinion, is most annoying to play against? Anything with Goblin Giant in it right now. Um, Zoroko saying, Supercell can take my money. Give me a uh, precious Procedus Evo Wizard. Very funny. But if you're late, that's pretty much it. And then by the time they're accessible a few months later, they're passed and power outclass. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Evo, the uh, again, I think that that's, that is a poor way to monetize the Evos. I agree with that. I guess I'm just personally annoyed that people can get Evo Night Shards in the shop and then appear for me. Interesting. Hasn't this already been casted by Bale? Yeah, I, I'm casting on a delay because of my schedule. George Stevenson saying, I agree that paying for a game is first world problems. If you're worried about the cost of a game, then find a different game or get a job that allows you to not worry about the cost. What's the obsession with Giant GY today? Says Smurf Blade. I, yeah, I just don't know. People are all about it today. I don't know why. I thought you would know. You're usually the guy who has all the answers. Where are you with the answers today, Smurf Blade? Wait, this isn't live? We are slightly delayed. This is, this is played today. We are behind. I don't know exactly how far we're behind, but we are behind. That loon's gonna do so much here. Nice push by Ali. Giant GY all the way in. Snowball there. This should get it back down. Ooh, good save, but connection anyway. Smurf Blade, yes, usually I'd know. Um, was it B-Rad who yelled out cards in World Finals? No, I don't even know who those guys were. It was some other group of guys who were yelling out cards over and over again at Worlds. I liked that the crowd was like, doing stuff, but it was like, I couldn't tell if I would thought it was annoying or funny. Honestly, the best crowd we ever had was um, 2019. That crowd was lit. But also, it's much easier when it's a one-day event for Worlds rather than a uh, three-day event. For in terms of, like, crowd involvement. Three days is a lot. Are there live cams for this? No, there are not. This is a smaller production. Giant in the pocket, GYN, arrows do clear. Snowball to slow. Skellies do not do enough, but they do give the lead to Titan.
Holds water for five months. At the current price, if I play the game for five years, and I'm forced to buy Evos every to bypass every month, that has seven hundred and twenty dollars, which you would agree is wild for any game, surely. Um, well, if you think about that, like for a year. I mean, again, you think about it by per. I, I mean, I'd, I guess you're right. That is a lot of money to spend on a game, but people spend that kind of money on things all the time. Snowballs and basically mouse. I think small ball is very well balanced. I mean, that's wild if you're like, oh, look at these nice Evo archers in the pocket. Bowler will get it done. GG well played. And Titan. Continuing the run here for Tropical. Nicely done. Um, if I play the game for five years and then I'm forced to buy Evos, but you're not for well, you're first of all, you're not forced to buy anything. You choose to buy something or not. Um, but, like, people have been playing Fortnite for how many years? And what's the what's the battle pass? How much is the Fortnite battle pass? Um, Fortnite battle pass. How much is that? I don't even know how much that is. Um, does anyone know how much Fortnite battle pass price? I haven't even looked this up in so long. Ten bucks. So, people have been spending ten bucks a month on the Fortnite Battle Pass for years, right? Um, and they do it, and they do it every month, like without question. So that's a hundred and twenty bucks a year. So it's the same sort of thing. So it's like um, Fortnite monetization, and that and that is a fair comparison. Fortnite monetization is purely co cosmetic, and I've talked a lot about why Clash Royale is kind of stuck in their system, because let's be very clear. I, I 100% believe, first of all, they can't make cosmetics the same way that you can because it's 2D um, and not 3D. Um, but the uh, but if Clash Royale moved to a purely cosmetic-based Pass Royale and cosmetic-based system for monetization, the game would be dead within 18 months. It, it's not, it's, it's not, it wouldn't be financially sustainable. I don't. You'd have to kill Clash Royale and rebuild it from scratch to be very different. Um, but I, I'm fairly sure that if Clash Royale switched to a cosmetic-based monetization system, the game wouldn't be able to pay its own bills within 18 months. So in a perfect world, all of this would be your. And I've said this before. In a perfect world, Clash Royale would be on a cosmetic, pay-to-brag rather than pay-to-win system. But that's not the world that it was built in, and not a world that makes them enough money to survive. You're all, everyone's making, no one's making necessarily bad points about the monetization of Clash Royale. It is a problem, but it's like, there isn't a there isn't from my perspective a really viable fix that allows the game to continue to exist. And then there's a lot of hate that goes towards the devs that I think is overblown for a video game. And that's actually a real dude. That from Fram was actually really nice because um, he out predicted Titan on that one. Titan had played NATO. Framcito. Um, then plays the minor, but the, the typical play when Nato's out of cycles go to the back. So Titan plays the knight to the back and Fram goes to the front. Yeah, with CR, the most customization you can do is your deck. Yeah, like honestly, um, and people are buying stuff in games, the monetization is working. Yeah, the, the game was like financially challenged, like in trouble for a couple of years. <coughs> Excuse me on that cough. Hey man, can you suggest one deck that can survive all meta and be played for years? No. I can suggest archetypes that you then might have to switch out a card or two as the balances change. Right? Like Hoggy Q is an archetype where most of the cards will maintain the same, but you'll have to change some cards eventually. Splash Yard. A lot of the core cards stay the same, you have to switch out certain pieces. So I can suggest I can suggest some decks that 
It also depends on what you mean by survive the meta you played for years, right? Like, how high are you trying to push? Um, Viper made it to, like, I think top 500 or top 200 or something like that with no Evos, continuing to play his Hog XE NATO deck, right? So, like, and also it's a skill question. What's the best archetype? Um, it depends on your play style. But so far it seems that the most sustainable archetypes have been um, Hog EQ and Splash Air. They seem to be the most sustainable archetypes. Psycho Dog saying Log Bait probably. 2.6 has to be the longest unchanged deck that is was somewhat viable. I mean, I, th I think that in general, hog cycle of some sort is probably the most sustainable long term. Hog is not getting nerfed anytime soon. And you got a lot of cards that can be moved around. Small adjustments to make it. 2.6 deck is a deck that's fundamentally bad, so it'll never be killed off. Although I don't add uh, advocate 2.6 at all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a good deck. Um, good players can beat bad players with it, and it has the occasional good matchup. This one, oh, that's a that was a nice mighty minor ability. That was a really nice mighty mighty minor ability from Fran. Good job holding on. Not going to be enough. GG, well played. Beatdown? No, there's no... Beatdown... Beatdown is... Beatdown goes up and down on the meta so fast. Um, I would not... I would never recommend someone for beat um, a beatdown deck to be, like, their sustainable way of continuing to be uh, good over time. Oh, here we go. Game three, Coco and Fram. We're into it. The thing that makes Hog so unique is that it's unlike pretty much all the other win cons. True. Very much so. Not saying to suggest 2.6. 2.6 has, has changed just because people are addicted to it and because of the free-to-play players. Same thing as people who still play Expo or Logbait, like classic Logbait. Um, Hog is pretty balanced. That is correct. So that's why it's always stuck out of the bridge. Except we've seen Hog in the back happening lately. And we've seen actually Mo kind of do a lot of... We've seen Mo do some Hog in the back, which is fascinating. During three-card cycle. Is 500 finish good? Yeah. If you finish... If if you finish top 500, you're better than 99% of players. It's not world-class, but it's good. Tumas Tumas saying, um, I'm with you, Rich, about the cost. When we were young, video games cost way more, and we might not even try it before. Yeah. There was nothing worse than spending 60 bucks to buy a game and then finding out it was trash, and then trying to return it and not being able to get, like, a third of the price back from GameStop or whatever. Sometimes you... S that, then when rental games became a thing. That was nice. How was your day? It's been okay so far. Um, oh, I thought Fisherman was banned too. Was that was that an error on someone's part? Um, maybe someone just got the graphics wrong. Yeah, Fisherman was banned in the first match by TSA. Olympo Squad did not ban Fisherman. They banned um, Goblin Giant. Evolved Royal Recruits and Elixir Collector. I think that there's. I think that the whoever is doing um, the graphics has been a little, little slow on it today. Goblin Giant Evolved to get a nerf. Yes, As yes, Assad. They are. And it's exciting. It's good.
Why is Splash Yard used so often? It's been used so often for a long time. Um, Splash Yard is just a really solid control deck that um, allows you to defend a ton of things really, really well, especially if you're patient. And it's one of those decks that it's rare that you're totally out of the game, right? Like you often, because it only takes one great graveyard push to change everything. There's a go. That's a good little prince. No RG connection. Nice. Oh, and the little prince stays up too. Um, it's interesting. We don't see a lot of Mother Witch. We're seeing Mother Witch here. I did not see those archers. I was like, why is the, this graveyard getting fully countered? And then the archers came from behind, and I was like, oh, okay. But yeah, I did not see archers there at first. That was really funny. But yeah, um, Graveyard is really good from a control perspective. Um, Mother Witch is not super popular right now. Um, in fact, this deck has dropped in popularity a bit overall, this RG deck. Interesting to see it here today. Um, and Splash doesn't use that often, says Smurf. I think also people are really comfortable with the Splash Yard archetype. And this is very true. That at the higher levels, Splash Yard, it's the fact that it's like really has a weird cycle to manage can be challenging. But I think you see it a lot at, lo at, at the more middle levels because it can be really strong against uh, more mid-level players, which is why I play it. Also, Splash Yard has NATO and Tombstone for Hog, which, if you're getting annoyed by Hog, it's nice to have those two. That's a, that NATO, will it be enough? Skelly's in. Oh, no. Coco's going to do it. GG well played. What a comeback by Coco. Nicely done. Match point here for Tropical Gaming. Very nicely done by Coco here who will now put his team in a good position to try to take the match overall. Let's go ahead and take a look at that replay here from Coco. You see Coco falls behind, puts the pressure on the right-hand side, doesn't get it. He's going to fall behind up here. This was that, was this the archers I didn't see? And just the Skeleton King ability here is huge. Gets a couple of touches. Fireball solidifies it. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right, last man standing for Olympo Squad will be Surgical Goblin. Can he do it? Oh, here we go. Let's get going. Um... Which RG deck is the most popular right now? Um, the one you just saw that, uh, I mean, right now I think people are switching out the Mother Witch for the um, for the Phoenix. But yeah, the RG, uh, mostly it's, I mean, there are some RG Monk being played competitively, but still the, the, the most popular deck of 2023 for competitive play was the RG Skelly King Mother Witch deck. Too early rip, says Kaiser. Yeah. Do I think that two seconds of Ice Spirit made this evolution reliable? I don't know. I think it's still going to be really low on the. I think it's very gimmicky, right? So I think it's still going to be very low on the list of things that are that are used. Other rely other evos besides ice besides the Ice Spirit are just more far more reliable. I think good matchup for Surge, says Smurfblade. If it gets triple, you can freely spam Minor Poison. True. Bomb Tower Delivery Log against 
piggies is nice. If I could max out just one deck, what would it be? I don't know. I It would be... Um, uh, I would just play Mega Draft. I hate decks. I'm a, I'm a Mega Draft stan, hardcore. And a new Mega Draft mini bracket will be coming to the channel. Um, I am going to be doing a live stream uh, sometime, I think, early next week. I'm trying to target the date down right now. Sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Um, they'll be doing a four-person uh, a four-person Mega Draft bracket, like the ones I did back in the spring with Mobile Legends Bang Bang, where I'll do the bracket. Jules will be joining me as a co-caster, and then after that, we'll be doing some sponsored content by Raid Shadow Legends. But they're providing some prize pool money so that I can put together a really fun Mega Draft tournament. Do I think Goblin Giant nerf was enough? Yet remains to be seen, probably not. Ultimately, the fundamental problem with Evo Ice Bear is that sacrifices it to do its job, to do a job. Yeah, that is, that is a problem. You know, like the Evo is very, I think that, I think it'll be like really imbalanced, right? Like Evo Ice Spirit will be great against Baloo. Uh, and it might do a good job against some tanky troops. Well, it'll stun them a bunch and then potentially their support troops move in front of them and you can kill them. Um, I haven't seen really enough gameplay with it to evaluate. But it's hard to value that over an Evo that, as Smurf Blade points out, gets lasting value. Will squad format come back to CRL? Nope. Squads are done. But I will say that the Royale Masters, um, oh no, the ESL Snapdragon Pro Series Two person, the, the two person format they have was great this year. Really enjoyed that during the finals. Rich, how do I get your friend link? Um, be someone I know in real life or be a top tier pro player? I don't like being watched. Yeah, both, both lanes in trouble now for Coco and trying to break through here. He's just, he has to just like be a mad lad and try to just continue not giving any chance to do damage. Has to control that. The Evo Skellies get it done. Ice Spirit does go back to the to the Miner. But the Miner Poison, I think, is just going to be too much here. Pigs in again. Bomb Tower down. And Surgical Goblin, our Coco needs to switch and just do little, keep the Little Prince on the board somehow. And three card cycle is Evas. I don't think he can though. And that's going to be a connection from the Guardian, I think. No, Guardian goes down. Goblins will connect. No, they don't. Somehow, Coco holds that off. But it's not going to be enough. Has to pre-EQ here. Has to pre-log here. Won't be able to do it, though. GG. Well played. And we're going to game five. Surgical Goblin clutches up for Olympo Squad. Well played, Surgical Goblin. All right. Um, two cycle thing makes it slightly more reliable, yeah. The fact SC used the hog deploy sound for Little Prince dying says all it's needed about their current level of Did they really? Is that a thing? Um, excuse me, don't you know who I am? Is Surgical Goblin still the goat? Nope. He's maybe third on the all time list, third or fourth. Kaiser Sosa, how do I get to respond to my DMs? What DMs? What are you talking about? I don't even actually know what you mean. Have you DM'd me somewhere? Evo bats for Inthrill. Fascinating. Splash Yard has played loads of times. Many people play the original log bait, so. Rich, was there a 2023 badge? Not that I know about. In dual format, it's better to play Hog EQ or Royal Hogs EQ. Uh, it depends on what you face so far there, Adam. Right? Like, if Mega Knight and Fireball are both still available for your opponent, Royal Hogs EQ, probably not the best idea. If they're both out, Royal Hogs might be better than Hog. 
just really depends on what's still available from your opponent's side. That's the thing about duels, right? Is it's a it's an ever changing your match changes game by game. If Gob Giant would not be OP, then Molite would have won Tarnate 23. I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't have. We don't know. But Goblin Giant definitely affected World Finals dramatically. Across the board. I noticed that sounding. I'll have to listen to that. I've never even heard that before. Royal Hogs EQ interferes other dual decks less in, in Smurfflight's opinion in terms of Evos and support cards. That's fair. I guess it just also depends. Like, if you are, it depends on when you get to game two, game three, what you have available, what your opponent has available. Right. It depends on also if you're doing in-game duels or if you're doing regular duels. Right. The duels where you actually can change your deck as like you're going along. So if you're creating a dual deck in the um, like Clan Wars format with the pre-make four decks, Royal Hogs EQ might be the better choice just because of what Smurfplay pointed out. If you're talking about um, normal duels where you're able to adapt in game two and adapt in game three, then there's not a clear answer there. That's a This is a good push by Surge. Evo RG doing its work, but this little prince is going to stay alive here. And that bandit and Mega Knight really deep in, and getting the getting the the guardian out in front is going to make things really annoying. You see Surge having to reply. The cycle here for Surge is doing a great job of managing, but look at that one, two, boom, boom, and that's what this deck that Inthrill runs does, right? It clogs up lanes, draws your fire, and then slides those wall breakers through. And this deep into double and into triple elixir. This is where Inthrill's deck, uh, Inthrill's deck. Uh, really is going to do its best work. RG up high. Little Prince going to use the ability as quickly as possible to get that knockback, try to prevent the RG shot. It's a good minor. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a child. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, Evo Bats in deep. Fireball comes out, gets everything. But in Thrill, might be too far ahead now. Ooh, but does he stop this RG? Has to get a little Prince ability to get this knockback here. Big RG shots. Fireball is available. Wall breakers behind. Arrows trying to clear. And the wall breakers connect in throw gets it done in game five. GG, well played. Nice work for in throw to clutch things up for tropical gaming. Titan getting the MVP today, but in through with the big clutch game there. And let's go ahead and change this up. And actually, we're going to go ahead and just change. So there you go. Results so far. We're actually going to go ahead and change over to our next set of match overlays. Let me go ahead and just boom, boom. There we go. All right. Um, Rich, who has the goat hair in the CR Pro scene? Man, that's tough. Um, Sweep has been on that list for sure. Moogie has definitely been on that list. Um, that's a hard one. That's a hard one all the way around. Next up will be Seam versus Team BLN. Um... Let's see. Uh, oh, Lucas also good hair, that's for sure. 
Let's take a look at the Seam BLN lineups for today. Newbie Hugo, Quentin, Sean versus Marnix, Jors, Hunter, EGW. Is that the Hunter who has a YouTube channel? I think I played one of his one of his viewers today who was in like a Hunter YouTube um, clan and played Golem. Ugh. Newbie Hugo, Quentin. Newbie versus Marnix, Hugo versus Jors, if necessary, Quentin versus Hunter in our opening set. Let's take a look at the bans for this one. Both sides banning Goblin Giant. Inferno Tower banned by Team BLN. That's an interesting ban here. Eva recruits out. Is iPhone better than Samsung for CR? I have no idea. I have not played on both. So there we go. Oh, and Lightning also banned here. Interesting set of bans from Team BLN. Lightning out, which undermines E-Giant. And undermines Goblin, or Golem in some ways. And some RG. But not all the RG. Here we go. Game number one. Oh, they started early. Oh, and BLM running Lava Loon. Well, maybe that's why they wanted the Inferno Tower out. Oh, boy. They must have started a little, a little before the admin said. And they're going to get that tower almost all the way down here. It's crazy how our team is banning Goblin Giant. No, it's not. It's annoying. No one wants to play against it. Get rid of it. Love, lovely bans from these teams. Lovely indeed. Inferno Tower is a super weird ban. Good point here. Oh, a newbie. Newbie now with the advantage as we go into the next minute. Why is he... Why that placement? Why not the pocket placement? If you're going to RG like that, especially with the possibility of Inferno Tower existing, why... Oh, no, there's no Inferno. I mean, Inferno Dragon, not Inferno Tower. Inferno Dragon existing. Especially in a Lava deck. Lava Loon Miner. Why are you RG not in the pocket? Why are you RG? What's the, what's the thought process? And that gets on Tower. Fireball does reset Loon to the King Tower. I think you've got to... Newbie, newbie playing into the King Tower lane consistently is really interesting. Is that how you're supposed to play this matchup against Lava Loon? Maybe, I mean, it, it might be that that's how you're supposed to play. Oh, and he misses the Inferno Dragon. He could be worried about a three crown race once the head start. That might be it. Great kites. Loon comes in. Tombstone, not a great tombstone for this situation. I understand why he put it there, but not a great tombstone for the situation. He's going to take at least one shot from the Loon. Loon does finally go down. Now he has two. I think he goes pocket here. you got to go pocket at some point, I believe. And he's not going to. The prediction with the Inferno Dragon, is there a fireball to reset it, or is this going to do nothing? Valk goes in on the right-hand side. Goblin, or the Skeleton King comes out to protect. Newbie cannot get around fast enough, I think, to affect this. And that, those archers will, oh wow, great archers. Arrow, the arrows will not get to them. This is a crazy opening game. This is a slobber knocker, if you will. And again, prediction Inferno Dragon. You gotta pull that over though. You can't be, it, how many does he get? Does he get two? He gets two. GG, well played. All right, Newbie. All right, Newbie. We see you. Game one here for Seam. Nicely done. Nicely done for Newbie and Seam Esports. And game two is going to be Hugo and Jors. Hugo, a guy who's been kind of close to making that next level. Here we go. Super Mouse, Smurfly, you should cast with Rich. Smurfly's knowledge is tremendous. Do I think that the Evo Arch will still be in the top of Evo's after nerf? I think they'll still be top three, probably. 
the range, they'll still have tremendous power. The range is, the range buff is, you can't under, underestimate how significant that is. I don't think Smurfblade is interested in casting, but he does have tremendous game knowledge. You know, someone made the point earlier about the Little Prince has all the wanted posters. So then, he has all these wanted posters. Why was the Little Prince not just, like, arrested on sight when arriving at the castle then? Lots of lore questions surrounding this Little Prince here, now that I think about it. Uh, so that was a great Electro Spirit from Jorz. He's still going to fall behind dramatically here because of, of the Guardian. But that Electro Spirit... Did a nice job of resetting the little prince and letting the fisherman do what it wanted to do. What's the prize pool? Forty-six thousand. Because the guardian bullied the king. Ah, I, I forget how the animation goes. Especially at first, and intimidated by the Guardian in the animation. Good to remember. Once again, coming in clutch. Hugo's Fisherman distracted. I think that Hugo might come out on top of this if he can just get the... If, oh, if he can get to that Phoenix. So Hugo's not going to get a shot here with his... Oh, with it, yeah, not gonna get a single shot. That's a good RG though. I like that RG a lot to distract the royal ghost. And now he's gonna get, I think, two out of this. No, the slow means only gets one. But now Hugo is gonna be back to his Evo RG. He does cycle a little faster because of these goblins. And now here goes the Evo RG. Monk does get the reflection down. The little prince, though, is going to survive, and the Evo RG shot gets in. Fireball comes down. 148 remaining. And Hugo, Hugo's slightly faster cycle is doing a great job of just not letting George get on offense and get his R his first RG down, or get get back to an Evo RG. George is being forced to defend so much. He's gonna have to rely on like one one push, I think, to try to win. Does this fisherman stay up? No, it does not. Little Prince gonna go for a knockback here. No. Goes for the Electro Spirit, holds. Weirdly timed Guardian ability. 922 to 383. And this monk is a problem. Evo RG. That's a great Evo RG. Fish Boy does pull. I don't know if this Evo RG can get through at all, though. George doing a great job of winning these bridge fights no matter how hard Hugo pushes. God, this cycle is crazy. I cannot believe that George is continuing to defend this appropriately. Fish Boy in. This is, is there enough DPS, though, to stop these RG shots? He's going to get one. 557. Fireball in. Gets the Fisherman off. 350 to 267. Evo RG. Hugo needs to block and pull here. The Fisherman for the Fisherman, though, is a huge problem. Can he log and knock back? Doesn't matter. Oh, my gosh. 2 HP. Can Jors get to a log? Fireball down. Does the RG shoot? The RG shoots in time! 2 HP win for Hugo! What a crazy, crazy bridge fight that was. Wild. Absolute wild. The scenes! The scenes! What a crazy, crazy fight that was. Let's go ahead and look at this replay here, folks. This was crazy.
that fireball on the fisherman was so necessary. And I was surprised we didn't see a little prince here or a guardian here for the knockback. Oh, there. This uh, this was the first one where he did not. He knocked back this one with the guardian. Had to log. Did, oh, didn't log. Just DPSed. And fireball not enough. Wow. Hugo's pressure. Hugo fought off for so long, but that RG just barely able to get in. Wow. Wow, that was so fun. That was crazy. And now we're going to go to our second set, King of the Hill here. King of the Hill, which will be... Sean, Newbie, and Quentin versus Marnix, EGW, and Hunter. So there we go. King of the Hill coming up. Seam Esports. Let me go ahead and adjust their score here as Seam Esports. Now, is ahead by a set. That was just so crazy. That's why this game is awesome. That's why even with all the problems, even with all the things that make you upset, you keep coming back because of that. Because of that kind of stuff. Marduk's always interesting to watch. Yeah, Marduk's is, Marduk's is certainly not boring. Let's put it, I'll say that for sure. Crazy edits. Hey, what's up, brother? Hope you've been there. Hope, hope you're doing well. Huge clutch there. Huge clutch. A lot of fun to watch. And now we're seeing... What is this going to be? Bowler RG or Bowler GY? Bowler Giant GY, probably. That's the big guess, Bowler Giant GY. So there you go. And yeah, MK Ram for Marnix. Marnix streams on TikTok. I've never streamed on TikTok. I know Juicy does a lot. I got, I feel like TikTok's only really worth it if it feeds into your other channels, like your YouTube or your Twitch. Because from what I've, what I've got, unless you're trying to sell something on TikTok. Apparently TikTok Marketplace is really lucrative. Poison arrows with the MK Ram is a lot here for Sean, aka Luna, to try to get past. You can't be cycling your little prince into your weak side tower against a poison unless you're supposed to try to draw out the poison. Yeah, look at that. Just like, there's so much spell value on the board for Marnix at any given time in this matchup. This feels very snipey. This feels very snipey. I'm gonna go and look up Luna on Royale API and see if um, if that gives me any any clue here. Because that definitely feels. That's weird. Oh, that's why. Um. Let me go look at Luna's Royale API and see if this is a deck that he runs a lot. Not seen it very much in his deck history. Hey, Whirling, guess what? 
you're on timeout because we know we're watching this on delay. Like, you know we're watching this on delay. So why are you spoiling matchups? If you do it again, you're banned forever. We're watching this on a delay. That's not good behavior. I don't know, I probably should have put it on the screen, but I wanted to make sure that viewers later had context. There you go, Marnox gets the win. Why would he play Rambo into a Boris Knight? That's a good point. That's a weird, that's a weird. All right. Let's get on to game number two. At least it was obvious he was going to win. Yeah, fair enough. All right, I'll be back in just a minute. Um, excuse me, do you know who I am? All right, I am back. And Marnix was choosing to run it back, huh? MK Ram two games in a row. If it ain't broke. It's hard saying, do you think it's a fighter gauging and Ganesh should make more money than Conor McGregor? I mean, should is such a relative term, you know what I mean? Entertainment. Show business. That's what it's about. The fight game is show business as much as it is a sport. It always has been. So, how many eyes do you bring? Marnix with about a 200 HP lead, chipped down a bit by that. That's the interactions with the Mega Knight are so weird for the Guardian. That's a good log. I don't know if it's going to do enough. He's going to deliver here just for safety. Interactions with the Mega Knight are so weird because you see, like, he gets knocked, but then, like, still flies forward sometimes. I don't want to make the Little Prince even stronger, but I feel like the Guardian, the Mega Knight, shouldn't be able to keep going forward after being knocked back by the by the Guardian by the Guardian. It should at the at, it should either be knocked back legitimately or should drop where the contact hits, but it shouldn't go backwards and then go forward like continue moving forward. That's a, that's a weird 
an unsettling interaction. 10 HP difference, 42 seconds left. You know what, that, you know, on face value, throwing four pigs into Mega Knight in cycle sounds like a bad idea, but you understand exactly why he did that. He wanted the Mega Knight into the weak side lane rather than the strong side lane. I do like that choice. Even if it seems unorthodox, 18 seconds left, 578, 601. You got a delivery and cannon here. You gotta just let this on the right hand side go. Piggy's in, do you have Earthquake? Do you have Earthquake? And that's a steal by Newbie. <laughs> Smart, very nice play. All right, all evened up in King of the Hill now. Very good. Um, yeah, because it costs six layer for LP and Garnish, but I counted MK jump. Um, I think the LP knockback nerf changed that interaction. Interesting. Previously would have done would have done enough. Yeah, um, it it just it should it the I think that has to be a, a change on the Mega Knight side then maybe. You know what I mean? Let's see. Um, does Surge play in this tournament? Uh, yes, he he did play. We already saw Surge play. Um, Rich, is Pedro CR in the same tier as Mugi and Mola? He's very close. Um, the only real knock on Surge, on, 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 on Pedro right now, is his deck pool is a little bit shallow. And we saw that at World Finals. Um, but within his deck pool, he's very good. And his deck pool's been good enough for him to be phenomenal this year overall. I think that um, with the right with the right planning, I mean, first of all, the fact that Pedro jumped the levels that he did shows how high his skill his skill ceiling is. He jumped insane levels in terms of skill and performance this year. Definitely, if there's like a most improved player award, by far, by far, it's Pedro. Um, I think that with a with a good plan for how to improve for 2024. If Pedro increases his deck pool, he, in my opinion, would be very unlikely for him not to be in the same tier as Mugi and Mugi. Uh, but that's a big question is, does he deepen that deck pool? Uh, I mean, even again, with his very limited deck pool, and I think partially because of what the meta was like, he was able to get second at Worlds this year and have a tremendous year overall. Uh, but the 2024 should be another tremendous year for Pedro, in my opinion. Uh, thanks. Did his team win? Uh, I don't remember if his team won or not. I think they lost. Oh yeah, game five of King of the Hill was the loss. EGW was a guy who seemed like he was going to be really interesting this year. And he had some tournaments where he played some really, like, out there decks and did some really fun stuff. I'd like to see more of that from him.
I don't think there's such thing as a GOAT award. State of the game makes it impossible to make play cool off meta decks. Yeah, except for look at all, but with all the bands, you should be able to find some cool off meta stuff. That's a nice push in both lanes here, and great job EGW forcing the spending on the left hand lane. I don't know how newbie gets back in this. I don't think newbie can at this stage. Um, Quesadilla is saying the two Evo GT is the most fun I've had in a long time. How far did you go? And I don't, I don't mean this as an insult, but it's one of those things where it's like, I had a lot of fun playing it up until about win eight or nine. And then it became the same, just goblin giant nonsense over and over again. Um, most skilled is very vague and skills overlaid as a term. Yeah, I feel, I feel, I feel you on that one. So you at the 17 and you still enjoyed it after like, like, wins 10 through 17 it was still fun or were you one of the goblin giant humpers Quesa Diaz were you running goblin giant we're we're in lounge mode by the way now we were in like be up right in the right in the face of things mode yeah he was the goblin giant but oh yeah, so I don't care if you had fun I honestly don't care if you enjoyed it blah I, ne I negate all of your fun with that with that tournament Uh, I got 24 wins on one account played versus Goblin Giant recruits 15 times. Yeah, it's just... Ugh. Invalidated, yeah. Goblin Giant wins don't count. I didn't play Goblin Giant. It was I had, again, I, I had the first, like, seven or eight games were really fun. And then when it turned into just, like, Goblin Giant stuff, I was just like, oh, this is un this is unplayable. I... I responded to a thread that Max was commenting in um, that I think there's potential in it being fun. I think it's way too early to tell if it's going to be, if double Evos will be good. My suspicion is that we need a lot more Evos in the game before it's a thing that's worth even considering putting into the regular game. Um, and the um, and the meta just did not provide the, the lack of a sufficient number of Evos plus the Goblin Giant meta didn't provide enough data for us to have any real, for, for a real valid evaluation of double Evos. Do I think pump should be changed? I think it's fundamentally broken and a high priority. It's like, I don't know, I think pump needs to be removed from the pool of cards for Mega Draft. RG getting it done. Did you guys? This is interesting. Um, and I'm curious about your thoughts on this. First of all, let me know in the chat, did you or did you not know that the monk can reflect royal giant shots? Because I honestly like had not seen that interaction until like a cut, like maybe a week or two ago. Oh, I did not know that, says Mr. Yeah, because you never see it. Oh yeah, that LOL, so Smurf Blade. So, I guess this raised an interesting question. Because, and Miss Extreme saying, I always do that. Yeah, the Monk ability can reflect Royal Giant shots, and it, especially against Evo Royal Giant, it shreds the Royal Giant. It absolutely crushes it. And here you go. Game number five, King of the Hill coming up. Quentin now giving his team a chance at match point. Nicely done. Mm 
little cough button there. Um, let's go to game five. Uh, no, but I know that Monk has some interactions. Monk does have some interactions, and that's one of them. And what it raises the question is, when we when I saw it happen against the Evo Royal Giant, it fully countered it, killed the Evo Royal Giant. It was devastation. It was massive. So I guess the big question is, why isn't that done more often? Why aren't people who play Monk against Evo Royal Giant doing that to counter it? As opposed to focusing on the knockback when you know that you're going to get Fishboyd. It seems like just do going for that interaction, preventing tower damage, and killing the Royal Giant. I thought that was a bug they patched as Kaiser Sosa. No, I saw it happen at, I think it was ESL. Or was it, was it no, it was um, Royale Masters, like, last week. It was crazy. Totally blew mine. I didn't realize that. I knew the Monk, everybody has a radius. And that was a big part of, um, uh, that was a Hunter going to Ice Bow. It was hilarious. But let's see if he can do it. Um, the 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 monk radius thing was part of Moe's loss against Adriel, right? Um, he put the Evo archers on the inside. The monk was on the outside of the royal giant, and then the monk radius was enough to reflect the Evo archers um, and get Adriel to win. So that was just that was fascinating. Um, if Monk can reflect Royal Giant, it should also reflect Balloon. Well, Balloon doesn't, Balloon doesn't, like, drops. I don't know. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, the, the, that reflection was the one, was what, was what won the game for, what knocked, that interaction, the, the Radius interaction is what knocked Muhammad Light out of the tournament. Ooh, that's a little late there on the NATO, but Hunter was really low on Elixir. Ari says, really hard to pull off the interaction, I think. And you have messed it up pretty much. You lost. Oh, interesting. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you, Zoroko. Thanks for coming. Monk plus ability is six elixir. Quentin trying to ho Quentin hogging into the expo. Another prediction fish, you're in trouble. Balloon drops don't hit troops. Good to know, but neither do Royal Giant shots. This is interesting. I I don't I haven't watched Icebo much at all, except for the last time I watched Hunter play. Does the EQ and the Evo Firecracker log, does that beat, does that break through the Expo enough to win this game? Or does Expo shut down well enough to just rocket cycle all the way? And two points here, Smurfplate and Quesadilla is both pointing out reasons why the Loon Drops would not be reflected. I thought Evo Royal Giant shots did do damage. I didn't. I don't think the shot does damage. I thought it was just the stomp, in terms of like doing damage right in front of you. Is the stomp a projectile? Here come the rockets. I don't think Quentin can get past the NATO Tesla nonsense. Tesla out of EQ range for the spell cycle game now. Is there a way to take advantage of the... Oh, that NATO actually works against um, Hunter, I think. Can you protect the Evo Firecracker here? Log comes down. Hog's not going to get through, and this should be game. I think this is it. Gotta say, I don't love seeing Expo, like, Ice Rocket wins. Not into it. I know it's what Hunter's for, and this is going to go onto his YouTube channel. This is his whole thing. But... Ooh, 
Ooh, a little BM there at the end, too. All right, we're going to dual mode. It's only the same as minor control. I, I disagree. I think I find it very different than minor control. Very different. Indeed. All right, here we go. The dual mode coming up soon. Hugo and Jors. As we are all tied up here, one and one. Um, let's go and jump into game number one of our duel. The Evo RG shot is actually an AOE effect for a small minus one, but it's still there. Um, let's see. Here we go. Dual mode. Vanguards, hello, rich number one caster, and Casa Diaz in my channel coming out and throwing some some shade here. Not even to make it on T, not not making it on screen with that one. And for those of you watching, folks, I think I'm going to have to have this be the last match of the day because of schedule stuff. I didn't know this was going to be four matches today until I started. I thought it was two like normal. This reflection, trying to find a spot for this loon. Oh, look at that. Will the loon get in? No, it won't. We'll get death damage. That's about it, though. Hugo way ahead. Ooh, missed with the bomb tower. Oh boy. What a terrible way to lose a game. What a terrible, terrible way to lose. My word. Missed with the bomb tower. Oh boy. You don't love that. You don't love that at all. Ooh, no fun. No fun indeed. What a throw, says Casey Diaz. Yes, I agree. Very relatable loss, to be honest. I also agree. Here we go. Game number two. A new Twitch badge. I don't know what this means. Neither do I. Interesting Twitch badge there. Now it's George's turn to run Hog against... So I guess we're just switching decks, basically. Is this minor Monk Loon deck good in, like, ranked? Or is it 
only good in competitive. I do enjoy playing Loon decks. Mm, nasty little push here with no spells available. Skelly is to control, but that's going to be some good damage here for Jors. It's mostly good in duels mode, not good in ranked. Never seen it on ladder. Seems to be mainly good for countering Evo Archer's cycle decks. Good to know. And nice little monk control here. Mortar... M Hog Mortar recruits Skelly Dragons. What a weird... Weird deck out of Jaws. You see, George wants to save the save the bats, although snowball will be a problem. That's a good earthquake, and it does get all the skeletons. Huge earthquake, in fact. That's an, that's a suspect time for those bats. Monk will get its reflection. Mortar is there, though and able to skelly drags low and control all of this. This is tough going here for Hugo. Weird, but I think he's going to win. Yeah, I think so too. You have to, uh, it'd, be kinda, it'd be a pretty big throw at this point. You have to, you know, let a loon sneak through or get caught by a rogue inferno dragon. Both of those things totally possible. But the fact that he's running the Mortar here and not the Bomb Tower means the Monk's ability to help Loons break through is so much diminished. He's in a Mortar High here, I think. Yep, there we go. And he goes Hog opposite lane. He might... What does he do about these Evo Skellies? i have to just log them late. Or just let him die. Let him die. Nice. Actually, really, really mature play there by Jors. And this is not going to connect. And I think Hugo knows it. Hugo probably knows it's over at this point. He's doing everything he can to stay alive. But GG, well played. Team BLN takes it in the third set. Nice performance by George, who's probably going to get the MVP here, I'm guessing. Yep, there you go. Well done, Jors. This has been the GKR theme music for the year. Very well done for Jors. And that's going to be a 2-1 win here for Team BLN. And folks, I do have to apologize, but I did not realize today that we were going to have four matches when I uh, planned things. And we are uh, we are we're going to get through three today, but we're not going to get through all four, unfortunately, because of uh, because of my schedule. They usually only do two matches a day, and today they decided to go with f they scheduled four for reasons that I do not understand necessarily, but is what it is. Um, so let's see. That's going to be. Oh, it's a good game, too. Trailblaze versus DC team. That's a fun game. But unfortunately, not going to happen today. Where can you watch the fourth one then? Um, I know that Bale streamed this earlier in Spanish, so it'll be available in Spanish. There won't be someone doing it in English, um, but it is available in Spanish on Bale's channel, which I believe is on Twitch. Um, if you're watching on Twitch, I'm going to go ahead and throw a raid out right now for somebody. Let's just go ahead and hit PCATS because he's. He's always he's always good. He's always a good dude. Long time long time streamer. Um, this has been fun, folks. Uh, for those of you watching on Twitch, go ahead and join. Did that is that raid happening? Where's the raid? Oh, I didn't I didn't use unraid. What? 
Start raid. I didn't hit the under raid button. Weird. Um, so we'll go ahead and send that one. And then uh, I will see you guys back here very soon. There might be something before then, but if not, then I will see you guys for the Mega Draft mini bracket coming soon. I'll keep. I'll let you all know when that's happening. As always, be excellent to each other. Party on, dude.